It is Austin. We are in Minnie's podcast. We are back. This is week number two. Uh, we've been. Ta- I took a little break. I had the folks up for Easter. Hope you guys all had uh, a happy Easter. I'm uh, pleased to say all went well on our end. We had a great time. Um, you know, but uh, let's get into Minnie's podcast. Here we go. Let's listen to a little bit more of Rule 5. that we're back in uh so today guys we're gonna do podcast number two uh we're gonna talk about um something that's really dear in my heart and that kind of made me who i am as a person for a while um i don't uh don't have it anymore sold it uh and but i took it to a good place i didn't take it to i sold it to a good person that's in a good place and you know i'm just really excited to talk about Tiny Houses, yes, I know, um, some of you might already know who I am from the Tiny Houses, but for those who are joining us today or are going to see this later on and just listen to some of my podcasts, I'm going to talk about something that uh, kind of changed my whole aspect on life, kind of, because back in high school, I didn't really uh, know what was going to go on and didn't know how I was going to do certain things with my life, and so... Um, I ended up doing tiny houses, which is kind of cool. It's a big uh, phenomenon right now that people are doing, and I always like to say that I was part of the driving forces to that. So um, let's get down to the whole story. We'll go it step by step. We'll do a little bit of chronological, a little bit of lifestyle. What I like about um, tiny houses now before tiny houses were and what they were like and what they are now like and uh how much they've changed in the past oh gosh 10 years now that i since i've started tiny houses almost and uh it's kind of awesome kind of just developing on people's aspects and stuff like that so back in uh 2014 i was uh kind of not 2014 uh when i was 14 sorry uh when i was 14 i kind of was looking around for kind of projects to do um i had a house fire when i uh just a couple years prior and my dad was building our house and 
So it was this cool development that I watched of my dad build our house, and he came across uh, Jay Schaefer and Tumbleweed Tiny Houses, and he's like, hey, they're in the next town over us. Do you want to go check it out? What do you think? They're kind of cool. Um, and for those who don't know, my dad, my dad is something of a wizard and predicts uh, all these random phenomenons that can happen in the world and uh he nailed the pin on the head on this one he was like you know you should you should really do something like this and i said all right let's go check it out i was all eager i was all whatever you know just a kid at the time um and i went saw it and i said you know i think it's pretty cool and i i got, we got there and i said i'm gonna build one of those you know what i'm gonna do it my dad's like, go for it, do it, you know, set your mind to it, talk to the guys, stuff like that. And so, started getting wrapped up into it, I'm doing my research online, I'm like, oh man, this is going to be a lot, this is going to be a big project, I, I, I don't know, I don't, I, I don't know about big projects like this. And so, I was 14, remember that. And I went to my freshman year of high school, and we had a project in Miss Fidev's class, in the ninth grade and it was called the eye search and the eye search was a least a 40 page essay on a profession or professional aspect of something anything could be whatever you wanted just had to get approved by her so i went up to her and i said i'm gonna do tiny houses this guy's in grayton and uh he he's amazing he's got all these little houses he builds he's got a book i read the book one of the only, like, few books I actually read in my whole life and just wanted to see where I would go and so she's like go for it so I did all this research I did 40 pages minimum I think I went all up and over I started talking to people and I did these interviews with Jay Schaefer with Steve with um, I did a couple other tiny house people and I was just going going into it and seeing uh, what could happen and so I told them one day, called them up, and I said, hey, I'm going to do a blog. What I need you guys to do for me is I need the plans because I can't pay the $1,500 for these plans. They said, okay, you do a blog, put us in there as like an advertisement collaboration kind of thing. We'll give you the plans. If you have any questions we'll help you out on the way so I started this little blog and uh, I didn't think much of it I'm not I'm not a big writer I suck at writing I'm highly dyslexic on when it comes to writing uh, I couldn't articulate my thoughts very well it was 15 year old work at this point this is what it was and so the summer when I was 14 I started up uh, I worked as a summer camp counselor, got enough money, and I bought myself a trailer. It was the most money I've ever spent. And it was my first paycheck. And I said, you know what I'm going to buy? I'm going to buy a trailer. So I was in Oregon, and I luckily was visiting my great-grandmother, who has passed now, bless her heart. Um, and my dad was walking around, and we walked around, and he said, there's, there's a trailer right there. Let's go look at it. I said, uh, okay. So we went and looked at it. And it was the cheapest trailer that we could find, and it was also the perfect trailer that we could have found. The only thing was it had a dovetail, and you know what? That's something we could have we could fix easily. And so, I went up to the guy, and I said, uh, "This is 18 foot trailer," and he said it was going to be uh, 2,400 dollars. And I said, "I I have 2,000." Will you take 2000 And he said, for you, why not? We shook on it, signed the papers. Uh, my parents uh, gave me the money, and I paid them back right away kind of situation because I didn't have uh, an account in Oregon or a debit card at the time. And that was cool. It was super rad, and I got all this uh, stuff figured out, and I was like, all right, cool. And, again, this is the time when I had my blog, and I started posting photos here and there, People started, I got traffic, organic traffic on my blog, and I didn't 
didn't know how big of a deal organic traffic was at the time. And uh, now that I'm doing this podcast, I'm getting no organic traffic at all. But uh, so it was just it was just weird for me just to get this all this organic traffic of and I had and I was mini house builder dot webs dot com. That way it was free for me. I wasn't putting out any other money that I couldn't afford. And eventually I started building on it and getting a lot of photos and Tumbleweed comes up, calls me and says, hey, we want to sponsor you in our blog. We're going to put you in. You need to be ready for it. Um, questions, any allocations or anything like that. You just, just want to be ready for all of it. And I said, all right, let's 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 do it. They posted it near my birthday, which is uh, in November of like Thanksgiving area. And I said, uh, and we're up uh, here in Oregon actually visiting. And I'm sitting down and my dad's like, have you, have you checked what's going on? Like, you're, How's your, you know, you get any views and stuff? So I go and I log in, and we're just sitting around, just goofing off. And I'm like, um, I got a problem. They say my site's down. And I'm like, wait, why is my site down? And so I do a little bit more investigating. My site actually had crashed because they said, well, you can't have a free site anymore because you have too much foot traffic. So I said, mm, okay. So then after that, I went and I got, uh, I put in my now debit card because I kind of needed, I figured I needed that after I was buying all this uh, wood and supplies. And so I started, I put in my old uh, debit card and I paid the 40 bucks for the name of minihousebuilder.com. Got a premium site set up and I tweaked it a little bit more because I had a little bit more uh, layouts that I could use. And sure enough, I hit 20,000 viewers in a couple of days and that was I mean that was the most I've ever had or will have on that site because it's no longer there but it was it was just so interesting to me as a 15 year old to have this many this much foot traffic whether it was the same person or anything I mean regardless I mean you divide it by five times the person clicks on it I mean you're still at 5,000 people and it for me, it was a, such a huge honor. I'm like, I got to keep doing this. And um, I had this donation button that I could add once I got the premium package. And I just had an unbelievable amount of support uh, from people. I mean, I, regardless, I got $1 donations, but I was so happy to even get anything to help me along the way. Because in, when I, winter hits, I didn't have much work to do. Um, and so I was relying on some donations, and then I would do work for my father and work for uh, lifeguarding and stuff. And so it was mainly weekends. And that's why it took me three years to build this tiny house. And time went on. I didn't get much more foot traffic than that. I mean, it was the skyrocket. I tried to make it, you know. Then I started getting into it and started blogging more and posting photos more. But it was mainly just photos because, like I said, I'm not very good at writing nor do I I have a good uh mo motivator not really I just I just didn't have the drive to blog about it and that really sucks because I look back and that's something I probably re am remorseful about because that could have been something huge and it could have helped me achieve more with it and really dive down deeper into it but for all all things aside, it was great. I started picking up traffic, started getting thing, getting all this. I'm like, you know, I I kind of put that blog on the back burner, let Tumbleweed focus me, feature me in theirs every now and again, which was fine. I loved Tumbleweed at the time, and I, you know, really trusted them. All that. Then uh, a little while later, I'm now a sophomore. And I'm I got my house pretty much halfway built and I got walls up, I've got panels up, I've got roofs on and I mean I cranked it out the summer between freshman and um, sophomore and I did a little bit more in the winter but rain hits you know so you can't do much for construction wise and then the summer between sophomore and uh, junior is when Things got a little bit interesting. I, I got started getting calls from people wanting to do 
interviews with me, which I thought was super interesting. So I got a my first interview with someone kind of big was called Al Jazeera. And for those who don't know, Al Jazeera is this huge news company that kind of goes all over the world. And they take all this news and they, they put it on their news network online. And I, I had no idea who they were. And my parents were like, you need to jump on this. Like, this needs to happen. And so uh, they're like, we need to videotape you working on it. And I said, I don't, I'm not, I don't have any money and I don't have anything to work on right now. I'm, I, I've been at a standstill kind of just waiting till like I get paid next and they're like no you need to be working on something or this isn't gonna happen I said all right meet you at my house in 20 minutes I tore something off and then I looked like I was working on it again so it was cool I mean I got that was the first interview I sucked at it I was the worst at it there was nothing to it that was special at all like nothing like zero i was just some kid building a tiny house and they put me blurb in as the youngest uh, tiny house builder and then they moved on to the next person fine by me got picked up by a couple other people and that's when stuff got pretty cool i as turning into a junior i began getting calls from ellen i got a call i didn't get on don't worry, guys, you didn't miss it, but I got called for Ellen DeGeneres, and that was by far one of the coolest moments. I, I, was, I came this close to being on Ellen, Ellen DeGeneres, but because another, by this time, there was two other places that had picked me up and discovered me, and Ellen is one for discovering people, and so since I was already discovered, I was no longer of value. Which is fine, you know, that's totally her thing, that's their focus. I was just honored to be even called and mentioned in the conversation. A couple other publications that I, or networks I got on to, um, or videos or interviews, what do you want to call them, I got in on a Stanford graduate program um, short film documentary that aired in a bunch of different uh, docu uh, short film documentaries. Uh, festivals which was awesome the guys were with Paul and Paul they shout out to you guys they were awesome they did uh, an awesome video with me uh, Jay Schaefer and Steve from Petaluma's uh, little little house on a trailer uh, all in Sonoma County we're all in one area we're all tiny house fanatics and they swooped by they took uh, two weekend shots of us and they they did one heck of a job on that video, and I I am still love that video when I watch it. It's just awesome. It kind of puts us on the map, which was cool. Another one was I got uh, Eco Channel in the Bay Area. They kind of are uh, teenager, 20-year-olds that are interviewing other 20-year-olds to teenagers about uh eco things that are going on in the area people who are doing green initiative uh activities which was cool because they were kind of my age and uh it was the first like real news like because al jazeera was a big news crew but it was only one guy in the camera they were like setting up and doing actual interviews with me which uh like face to face sitting down which was awesome then i got on to the travel channel now that was cool. I got the whole thing. Got mic'd up, like serious mic'd up, and I mean, it was just awesome. I mean, I got to be a part of it. I was on the Extreme RV channel with Jay Schaefer again. I mean, I'm I was kind of on Jay's uh, tail end, you know, just dra he was dragging me along, but I really felt that I was picking up wind and. I could be something more than Jay, but you know, him being one of the the key visionaries in my dream, he gets to be you know a little bit bigger than me, which is fine. It's fine. I don't. You know, I wasn't minding that. I was honored. I was even honored to even be on TV. I was honored to be on this stuff. And the only reason that the the um, Travel Channel even picked me up wasn't because of Jay or anybody like that it was because of YouTube 
and I became somewhat of a YouTube phenomenon, not really phenomenon. I got a lot of hits. I got a lot of hits in one time, and which was cool. And it was all because of uh, this video that uh, Fair Companies posted. They do great work. They go around. They do a lot of uh, just interesting videos of interesting people out there. A lot of tiny house stuff. Some other things in between. But they came and they they said, you know, we want to interview you. And they were real professional, like uh, not to any extent of the some of the other people that I had, but they were just really good at what they were doing and they interviewed me and I probably did the worst interview ever I mean I didn't know what to do with my hands I mean you watch the video and I could not sit still I mean I it, yeah there was nothing no words to be said I didn't know what I was doing and it was just baffling that over a million people let's look I mean let's look it up right now I mean there's so many people who have seen that video I and there's it's still climbing and because of AOL real estate now let's think about that AOL yeah people still use that actually I still use it but I'm just saying that people still looked at that article and um, they saw it yeah right now it's it's got 5.5 million 5.5 million views on on YouTube which is phenomenal uh, Kirsten D Dirksen is the the channel it's on and she does some great work she got a lot of tiny house stuff and uh, I would highly check her out the fair companies used um, is her company that she runs but yeah she posted it six years ago today or not today but like six years ago from now and I was 16 and it picked up and it was awesome I mean well I thought also put into account maybe a, a thousand views are just of me but no nevertheless I mean come on still I I still can't believe it and then she did a follow-up um interview and that one was cool it was i think it was a lot better and we did uh a couple different uh her parents came and helped and it was just a couple different times but i had an open house that she couldn't be to but i mean that one still has two and a half million views i mean this is just awesome and I was really picking up. I got, I finished my senior year uh, right before I graduated. I finished completely. I did an open house. I had about 1,200 people come in, check the house out, and really see it for what it was, and that I, you know, that I could actually do something. And I mean, it was really cool. The funny thing is, like all these, I look back. I'm looking at the uh, YouTube uh, thing, and the people people say some rude stuff, and then I got you know people you know cheering me on, but it's just it's just baffling that people still say mean things. There's trolls out there all the time. Uh, but it was really cool. It was a really cool part of my life uh, after. After all that, I got to live in it. I lived in it since I was a sophomore. Once I got the roof on and it was water to, you know, sealed, I was fine. I moved in. I was no problem whatsoever. I said, that's nothing. Let's do it. Let's go. It's camping outside. It's camping in my tiny house. It's something I built, something I worked hard for, and I wanted to live in it. So from then on, I lived in it. It was awesome. Kept getting, kept getting these little other things to fix it, fine tune it, and it became something that I was really, really proud of. And um, another fun, actually, another fun publication was the National Enquirer. The National Enquirer was a cool publication because they tried to spin it as a 15-year-old and 
just wanted to have sex, so he built a tiny house so that he could just have sex in it. Whatever. The National Enquirer. My own publication. Nothing about tiny tumbleweed or anything like that. That was me. That was hilarious. I thought that was by far the funniest of them all. And then the newspaper, our local newspaper, uh, the Press Democrat, they did a full front page page of me, and that was pretty awesome. I mean, it was a surprise. They, I knew they were going to do uh, an article on me, but I just thought it was going to be some blurb on the uh, you know, local section, but they put me front page, so obviously they didn't have any better news that day, but except for me, which was kind of cool. Anyways, um, all said and done, I got the whole tiny house done, and I got a lot of compliments from people who checked it out, and I got uh, Steve Wiseman came, and he looked at it, and so did uh, Paul. Uh, who was uh, his business guy, and they came to the open house, and he said, all right, you ready to work for Tumbleweed? And I said, work for you guys? And I'm like, yep, we want you. And so uh, in high school, I started working for Tumbleweed Tiny House Company, and it was really awesome. I was going to be part of their sales and like motivation team and go and speak and stuff like that. And Paul had me take a couple phone calls and it was really kind of interesting because like people who were calling in were asking questions and then they'd be like, well, you know what? We have a uh, in-house expert right here. His name's Austin Hay. And they're like, oh, the the tiny house kid, the the guy that was on YouTube. And then I was just always so shocked that people knew who I was. And I was like, yeah, hi, how's it going? And I, I mean, I was I was good with personal one on one, but I was not nearly prepared for crowds. And so. I did my first seminar with Jay Schaefer and Tumbleweed as they were splitting. It was like that first kind of like, oh, we're about to split, but Jay's still doing seminars. And we went to uh, UCLA and we gave a seminar there, which was awesome. No doubt about it. The the hotel sucked ass. Um, we were scared for our lives. We were a lot. We were 40 minutes away from the – but. Regardless, it doesn't matter. It was cool because I was in high school giving a seminar at UCLA. Crowd came in. We got food. Uh, we're eating in the cafeteria um, with other students, which is kind of weird. But um, So I, I get up, and uh, they're like, all right, you're going to go speak about this, this, and this. I'm like, um, okay. Do I get the slides or anything? They're like, nope, you're just going to go up there and you're going to talk. And so um, he gives me these these options to talk about, and I built it, but I couldn't explain it yet because I didn't know how to explain it. And it was the first time I bombed. I bombed in front of a lot of people. Like when I bomb in front of an interview on camera and stuff, they just go, all right, erase that and throw that away and keep this part that's actually kind of good. And bombing in front of a live crowd is a lot different. And being public speaking, the number one fear in the world, I mean, it's, yeah, it sucked. But I got up there and I loved every minute of it, even though I had no idea what I was talking about and bullshitting out of my ass every second of it. It's awesome. And that's what led me to wanting to public speak. But I only got like a year more of that, but that's okay. Anyways, uh, so when I was there, the biggest part that I think that uh, Paul and Steve kind of noticed were I'm good at talking about my story, my experience, and how to motivate the crowd into that um, kind of I'm 16. If I can do it, you can do it. Seriously, anyone can build a tiny house. You just need to want to build a tiny house so which was awesome totally awesome drive home from LA which is nine hours that was an awkward ride with your boss in the car talking about all the things you did wrong and your dad's just sitting there like yeah you did do that wrong you know you were not prepared for that that's their mistake not yours I'm like yeah, I gotta take some responsibility for not knowing what I'm talking about so that was that fine I started kind of talking with them and we're going over 
slides and talking about it more and more now so that I'm more prepared when I get into the, uh, the subject. Not a problem. So a couple months go by, I'm starting to graduate high school. It's coming around December area, January. And they're like, uh, we're going to, we're going to send you to Florida. I'm like, Florida. Fuck. Yeah. I'm going to Florida. And they're like, yeah, we're going to send you to Florida and you're going to go speak down there. Paul's going to go with you. You're going to be the setup guy. You're going to be this, that, and the other. And I said, all right, I'm going to get paid to go speak. And, um, all right, so I got down there, and Paul had to do his thing, and I went to Universal Studios <laughs> the next day. Why not? Because I company's paying for it, and so I thought. And going down, he's like, all right, you need to go there, set up, and then you have uh, to check in and do this, that, and the other. I'm like, oh, I'm, I am seven, I am 18 years old. I am doing all this for you okay and so I get down there and I do it all and do pretty good and he's like all right so when you get up there we're gonna record you so that you can watch yourself back to show you what how you speak and how sucky you speak and I said okay so I did the first day did the meet and greets I did the check-ins Got everyone in, got their tickets, and got their seats, concessions, all that. And I went up and I gave my motivational speech, which was awesome. Nailed that. Nailed that down-ish. But, I mean, I was 18. Didn't know what I was doing. But I did good on that part. Then they start like, oh, you're doing good? So here, let's throw you in two... This slide that you have no idea what you're talking about, and you need to kind of just talk about it. I'm like, okay, doing this again. All right, you know how well it went last time, but it was fine. I mean, I didn't do a great job, but I forgot to call uh, the header the header of a joint and wall and how to talk about the foot and the subfloor. I called it the flooring under the flooring. So, yeah, that wasn't my best work, but it was a really cool experience, and then Paul turned out to be a sex offender, didn't know it, then made me take pictures of him and his new girlfriend and slipped in the hotel of her room so they could have sex and videotape it, and then he could w try and show me that he filmed it. Yeah, that one sucked. Yeah, everything about that one sucked except for my speech. That was it. Um, but, yeah, so he was an interesting dude. And then I got back and got some unfortunate news, but that really hurt. Um, my uncle had passed away as I was um, flying home, which wasn't, you know, icing on the cake of how bad that experience was. But it was a lot of fun, and I don't regret it because I learned a lot. Again, I learned a lot about speaking. Some time went on, and when I graduated, after I graduated, I started working more and more. And um, Steve and Paul and all the people at Tumbleweed were invited to my graduation party, which I thought they would come. And the only person that came was Steve, and I didn't know why at the time. And he got me a cool present, and you know, he congratulated me. He said, you know... We'll see you for full-time work starting Monday. And I said, okay, I'll be there Monday on time. And I got there, and that's when they broke the news that uh, Steve just hadn't registered as a sex offender in a while. And uh, if we wanted to have him back, and I felt violated that he shared a room with me and didn't disclose that he was a sex offender, which was uh, pretty crazy. But that that set aside, I worked with Tumbleweed from, for that whole summer, and I learned a lot. Uh, great deal about public speaking and I learned about customer service drafting I became um, a second hand to uh, Meg Stevens who helps Tumbleweed I think still I'm not quite sure we haven't we haven't talked in a long time 
but she's an architect and a realtor and she designed a lot of the new houses for tumbleweed and i mean she was just phenomenal and mm, they all taught me so much i lived with them out in sonoma um I got to hang out with uh, Meg and her husband, and I got to hang out with Joe Coover, who's a good friend, and uh, his, um, and Brianna, him and Brianna, I got to hang out with for a, a long time, and it was a really cool experience, because I was 18, and I didn't know what I was doing with my life, because I thought I was going to do tiny houses for the rest of my life, I didn't think anything else, I was like, this is a business I want. This is a dream come true. And uh, one of the coolest, coolest uh, speeches I did where I went with Joe Coover and they said, all right, who wants to go to Canada? Like, uh, like uh, we need to go to Canada. We have um, Vancouver. We need one more person. And Meg couldn't go. And I said, I wanted to go. And couple other people said they're like we're gonna send you austin you need a passport and i said i will go get my passport now so i uh, went and got my passport and we went up to canada vancouver canada eh? which was awesome it was a great experience i got to hang out with deke Durkinson, who is absolutely my favorite tiny house person in the world i mean that guy is a wizard and just a an awesome person i mean he's an artist beyond all means and he takes that tiny houses to another level and he is not tiny at all me i am five foot five on a good day like i am a solid short guy he is six two six four i don't know but he is tall and he is awesome and he's just a very uh fun guy and i got to have the coolest time up there with Joe and him just checking it all out and doing a lot of speaking and he is someone that really taught me you know hey you're you're doing good but you need to like step back take a breath slow it down and you that one that one time I went up there it was more learning than I could have ever imagined and I also learned what a nude beach looks like because that was I, I got to the front desk and said oh hey what's there to do around here and they're like oh there's a really cool beach down there mm, okay I don't know what I'm doing so I walk over jaunt 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 and oh nobody's wearing clothes all right let's do it and I yeah super embarrassed didn't know what to do with myself because I was 18 and these were all really older college kids or stuff but anyways I, I learned a lot on that trip and I got to in develop my speaking skills which I haven't used almost since then um, that was pretty much my last speaking event because uh, minus one or two places but that was my biggest major one and I got done with that and I came home and we kept working I drafted a lot of uh, the elm we redid the elm layout and I was kind of a key part in that which is really cool because while everyone was doing like two or three I was just focused on this one because I had no idea who I was at the time or what I was doing so they just let me do that one and I said all right, and then I became the handyman, and then I kind of took a step back a little bit further, and then uh, something sucky happened. I was doing workouts, and I was kind of into parkour at the time, and I did it on my weekends at this gym that was teaching it. And so I was going for a run one day, and I went through an intersection, got hit by a car at 30 miles per hour, and my hand was all swollen, I sprained my ACL, but the only thing that saved my life was that I hit the car with my hand, and then when I got thrown across the intersection, I rolled, and because of the parkour instincts that you get, you roll 
right after you hit the ground. So survived, not, nothing but scrapes and stuff, but I couldn't click a mouse very well and I couldn't type very fast and it became the steady downfall of me working at Tumbleweed and they said, you know, we think you should focus on school basically. And I said, okay, all right. So I went to school and I hated going to the same, so I went to community college in the same town and I just couldn't stand it. Couldn't stand it because guess who I saw every day? Everyone I've already seen for four years. Like most of the people that I saw for four years and people I saw outside of school. And so I was like, God, just, this, this doesn't feel right to me. So I made my way up to Oregon. Lucky enough, I found my wife, got me, started dating, started, you know, moving in together. And I said, you know what, I want, I would like to move back to California. She's like, I don't. And I said, please, pretty please, pretty please. And so finally she said, okay. So we moved down to California and I have a house set up with my cousin and he's like oh it's not gonna be done so we live with my aunt tracy for a little bit and as we're living there like we need to do something we need to find a house and i'm like it's fucking expensive to live back here in sonoma county and we're not making enough money so i took what money i had left of my settlement from getting hit by the car and i redid my whole tiny house I gutted the whole inside and I asked my wife what are things that you want different in this tiny house she says it needs a working toilet it needs <coughs> a downstairs bedroom that fits us both with the queen bed our t we're not getting rid of our TV and I want a dishwasher and I said you're getting three of the four which which is which one do you want to give up and she gave up the dishwasher I'm like, thank God she gave that up because I can do everything else. So I went in and I redid the whole plumbing of the house. I moved whole, <laughs> I moved everything in the house, and it was uh, cost us a little bit of money, but it was well worth it. I mean, we lived in it for six, six or eight months, and we crushed it as. Um, we were dating when we were living in it, and we got engaged when we were living in it, and uh, we slept uh, a mere <coughs> three-fourths of an inch away from the toilet, pretty much. I mean, the only thing that was separating the toilet and the, the bedroom was a piece of plywood and a curtain. That was it, but, you know... Uh, can really love somebody when you live in a tiny house with them for that long <laughs> and we moved out of that place into an apartment and kind of just lived in California for a year total and we said we're done we are done living small in there we're done with the kind of expensive living of California and we moved back up to Oregon and we lived in a 400 square foot apartment, woo, by ourselves. We could afford it. We got um, some good jobs, so we were doing just fine. And it was really cool. But the tiny house experience has not left us. I mean, we live right now in a 700 square foot apartment. I mean, we still live tiny comparative to most modern people, I mean, most people these days live in about, I would say, anywhere between 2,000 and 2,500 square feet. Maybe a little bit less, depending on the area, but there's not a lot of places that people don't, they don't live as small as we did. But there's still a lot of people living in 15 to 1,200 square foot places, and that's awesome. I mean, that's all you really need as a human being, if you can, you know live outdoors and go places like if you don't then i guess you kind of want a bigger house but i mean that was the main reason is like you live outside you don't you eat and you can eat outside so i guess you just sleep and go to the bathroom inside that's about it
place to store your clothes. But it wasn't uh, it wasn't meant for us to live in the 140 square foot that we had forever. Uh, luckily, I actually sold it not that long ago, about a year, almost a year ago, or something like that. Um, I sold it to my cousin, and I made not much of a profit. I mean, if you consider the work I did on it, then I lost money. But I sold it. I'm using that money to um, hopefully buy a less than 2,000 square foot home. Because I still don't want to live huge. I still like the aspect of being close and being tiny. I I liked that picking up the whole house took 30 seconds. I mean, I like that kind of stuff. I do want a dish. I love dishwashers now. I wish I would have put that in the tiny house, but um, you know, you can you can make it work. But it was a it was a really cool experience in my life, and I now just look at the phenomenon that is tiny houses these days and what people are doing. Um, there's some people who are doing great jobs uh, of making tiny house communities. Like there's one in Texas right now that houses uh, people who are homeless, and they pay two to three hundred dollars a month if they're approved to live in this area. They get their own tiny house, and they get to be like, "Hey, this is your progress. You're gonna keep getting better and better and better until you can move out of here, so we can put somebody else here." There's all these charitable donations like that that are making these tiny houses and getting people who can't afford or can't rent a normal size house because they need to save and they can't save if they're paying so much in rent so they are putting them in these houses as a almost not like a halfway house is that's a bad way because that's like when you go to jail and stuff but it's an in-between house we'll say and they're going there, and then they get to, you know, move on. And they can see that they don't need a lot of space. Not a lot of people need that much space. I mean, if you're six foot, and you're only two feet wide at any given time, you're occupying 12, you're 24 cubic feet at a time, maybe? And so, you, when you think about it, you don't need that much space. It's nice to have a lot of space, but I mean, I've got I've got extra space in this house right now. I mean, I'll, I'll mess aside from over here because I just haven't organized and gotten rid of some stuff that needs to get rid of. But I mean, this is a whole extra room that we don't even I use for gaming and my podcasts. That's it. I honestly don't need this room. I don't, but it's where we can afford, and if I have guests, they can stay in here. Like These are all nice to have. These are not, not have-to-haves. Everyone, oh, I need at least two guest rooms because I'm going to have so many guests here and nobody stays in them, and it just becomes a closet of uh, collection. I mean, my grandfather, who also had passed away, you know, he's was a great guy but he was a hoarder he hoarded and i i have some qualities like that and i have to teach myself not i need to let go of this and let go of that because i really don't need that but it has a special meaning but you don't always need it like uh, do i play uh, do i play rugby anymore no but this one is nice because i can wear it serves two uses as a memory and as article of clothing that is really comfortable but stuff like that like when I'm done with this and it's all beaten you know I can't use anymore I'll hand it to my mom she makes quilts it's another use for it repurposing stuff like I don't uh, I took this is my head this is the stand for my headphones that I made myself I made this out of repurposed wood this is all uh, fence boards. I, I mean, that was one of the biggest things I learned was there's multiple uses for things. If there's not, is there an item that can be used for multiple things? 
and there's lots of storages storage things you can make that are both functional practical and pleasing to the eye I mean uh, as weird as it sounds I got a lot of ideas of like sites like uh, just DIY sites and some oh one was stair porn you look up stair stair porn you know it's just a bunch of different types of stairs but I saw these like ship ladders that were stairs I saw these ones that were drawers uh, in between the steps that were awesome or ones that had it w went back really far and they could put books behind it or it was hollow and it just saved a lot of space because there wasn't anything really in between and you could just keep it off to the one side I mean there's a lot of ways to save space and time I mean you want to save as much time you want to save as much space so all these things just add up to money I mean the houses that are 4,000 square feet are obviously gonna be more than the houses that are 1,500 square feet but wait they're not always sometimes they cost this they can cost the same amount and that's one thing I want to talk about is tiny house living is nice and is awesome for the folks that can do it but not everyone can do it and not everyone should do it that's something that you have to figure out for yourself there's a lot of people who regret buying tiny houses these days T tumbleweed sells their houses for godly amounts of money you can build it you can build a solid tiny house for less than twenty thousand dollars if you have the time if you don't you can pay someone to build it for less than twenty five thousand dollars I mean y y you can figure it out but the only thing that tumbleweed had that nobody else had was that they were RV certified so that you can park them in certain areas but the people who are buying these are mainly putting on pieces of property that they camp out of because you're not technically allowed to live out of them you, you got to know your codes and know your stuff like that I'm not going to get into that kind of details because it bores a lot of people and it's really not my expertise and I don't want to say something and then you get in trouble for it but on that note you can't live out of a tiny house you can camp out of it for 30 days of the month then on the 31st day you have to move you have to leave and stay somewhere else then you can camp back there for another 30 days I'm not saying that you can live there okay cool um, depending on your area it that was California and Oregon I know that some people have gotten kicked out of their tiny houses so I can't can't say legally what is right and what is wrong but that's what happened with some people I know anyways I think that people who charge on Airbnb or on real estate on anything for making someone buy a tiny house for more or rent it for more is really sucky person because yeah it's cute and it's quaint and it's this lifestyle of minimalism and people trying to figure out if they can live in one you, the whole premise of it is to do it for less I mean there's tiny houses on Airbnb that are more expensive than shitty not shitty but really nice hotels like a like a three or four star hotel and then you have this like tiny house that is no don't mind me it's probably really nice but it's like you you don't need to spend so much money on it I mean there are aspects where you can really vamp it up and spend hundred thousand dollars on a tiny house easily but at that point you might as well rent an RV because essentially 
it's the same space and they're all you know they're not the nice wood and stuff all the time but it's just doesn't make sense to me I don't know I I don't think anyone should be charged more because it is tiny I think they should be charged less I think you should charge based on the value of it and how if you have it for less people will want to stay in it more because it's the tiny house they're awesome but it's not for everybody even BuzzFeed did a video on it uh, on uh, one of the guys he went in and he stayed and he's like I'm too tall for this I can't live in this size I mean Jay Schaefer lived in 97 square feet or 98 I forget but that's tiny that is literally tiny and he did that for years and I just think that this whole thing is an amazing adventure for me at least but like people who want to do it and live out of it it's a great thing to be minimalism and I mean I when I built my tiny house I had two trash cans full of garbage that was it nothing was if I could I bought things that weren't packaged but I mean screws and nails sometimes come in packaging sometimes they're in cardboard I can recycle cardboard but I can't recycle plastic and or at least not this kind of plastic so I collected all the trash and I only had two two garbage pails full of it and uh, for me that as a green stance that was awesome I, I go to some of these job sites and I see just piles and piles and dumpsters of things just getting thrown away like sheetrock over here sheetrock over there I didn't use sheetrock I don't want sheetrock in a tiny house especially since it's on wheels you can move when you move it sheetrock will crack and crumble and I don't want that and there's no real need I mean sheetrock is really super earth friendly I used wood wood paneling log cabin kind of feel paint it white then it's modern I mean it's and then I know it all then you have these people that will say well you're cutting down trees you're cutting down trees if I cut down a tree why don't I replant it there's people who do that they go back and they replant the trees that they cut down well yeah it takes it takes a long time yeah I'm not cutting down an entire forest for I if you gave me one 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 really good tree I can make a whole tiny house out of it one one that's all I would need but I, I mean yes you're right I didn't lumber the mill myself and I didn't do it myself but I'm just saying if it all came down to it I would need one really good redwood or pine I mean just a really tall old tree cut one down you could build a tiny house I mean that's how we used to do it, is we only cut the trees down we need it and now we're cutting them all down for whatever but just saying building a tiny house can change your perspective living in a tiny house will change your perspective and that's my rant on tiny houses uh, we're wrapping up an hour of this session I've got a total of one viewer which is me right now on the live stream which is awesome just remember guys I do live streams I'm gonna try and make them regular on Thursday or Wednesdays and uh, we'll see how that goes otherwise I appreciate you guys all you out there let's finish up with the rest of the song called Big Tuna by Rule 5 that we were listening to earlier